You're probably familiar with the triplomacy study that Boris Marstella released last year and we've updated it in July looking at how heads of state and heads of government use Twitter and we're specifically focusing on Twitter. I know, you know you're all also on Facebook and Google Plus and LinkedIn but you know, this study really looks at uh, how uh, governments, international organizations tweet. So today we're happy to present a study looking at the 100 biggest multilateral international organizations have already received several tweets saying why is my NGO not included. So uh, the accent was really put on multilateral international organizations. Um, and we have, we've identified 100 of them um, all over the world, uh, but of course uh, mainly in Geneva and in New York. Um, and for the record, the Geneva international organizations have 6.2 million followers, uh, slightly more than New York with only uh, 5.8 million. But you can also see, of course, the colleagues in Paris uh, are active in Rome, in Nairobi, uh, in Frankfurt and uh, Amsterdam, uh, and in Glomp, because we also include the WWF. So, um, what is interesting is not the number of followers. Um, you know, I know we're always measuring the number of followers, but what we thought was very interesting is how effective is your communication on Twitter? And one measure of effectiveness, it's not the only one, of course, is how often are the tweets retweeted? How often uh, is the tweet shared? So here, I'm happy to announce that CERN, uh, uh, here in Geneva, is the most effective international organization because its tweets are retweeted uh, 130 times on average. Now, of course, you will tell me that is because of the uh, Higgs boson. Uh, definitely, the, you know, the tweet uh, uh, about that discovery has really uh, raised the, the bar. But there are also other agencies. UN, uh, UNICEF uh, is also very, very effective with 100 retweets per tweet followed by the UN and WWF and Greenpeace. If we're looking now, of course, at the numbers of followers, uh, UNICEF is actually way above the rest with 2.2 million followers. Um, the UN is in second place with almost 2 million. Uh, I think they've actually, since we did the study, they have uh, passed the 2 million mark. Uh, so you can see the growth is phenomenal. Uh, followed in third place by the World Economic Forum, uh, and you know, as most of you know, I have been, uh, I actually set up that account and was uh, head of digital at the World Economic Forum uh, for seven and a half years. Also followed by the UN Refugees Agency, uh, the UNHCR. Uh, maybe one slight note on these two organizations, because they were among the first to set up an account in 2009. They were on Twitter's uh, suggested user list. What does that mean? Uh, there was a list of 240 accounts. When somebody would sign up to Twitter, um, he would automatically follow 20 accounts. And UN, uh, the UNHCR and the World Economic Forum accounts were included, hence that uh, number. So it's not based on their tweets, but they're still doing uh, a good job at tweeting. And li uh, large, uh, lastly, in first position, the uh, WWF. But as I said, you know, I, we're, not, we're not doing this here you know, to have a ranking of the, of the most followed. Uh, it's really looking at uh, engagement. And one thing which is interesting to look at is you know, who's the who are the most active international organizations. And here we have the uh, organization of uh, uh, Ibero-American states, uh, which tweets in Spanish. It combines all the Latin Spanish-speaking countries uh, of the world in uh, Latin America, in Europe, and uh, in, in Africa. Um, and you can see they're sending out 42 tweets on average every day. Now, 42 tweets on average, for me, uh, I find that a bit spammy, um, a bit too much. Um, the UN Foundation uh, comes second with 22 tweets, and, the, um, and UNIS Geneva, actually, uh, here, the UN uh, Information Services in Geneva, retweeting quite a bit of information from the Geneva-based international organizations. I think 20, you know, anything that goes, uh, is more than 10 tweets is probably a bit too much, but it works. So, um, you know, you, it's the, the way the, also the UNDP and uh, UN uh, tweets. Lastly, what I find really interesting is how conversational are the 
organizations. And here we can actually see that Eurocontrol, Eurocontrol, I don't know if you're familiar with it, it's the European Organization for uh, air, uh, air Travel, and they basically uh, monitor the air travel and give the slots. Uh, they're based in Brussels. <coughs> and their account is extremely conversational, uh, tweeting about uh, disruption to uh, the, the, the flights. 37% of the tweets have an at, start with an at reply, so those are replies to other uh, Twitter users. You have to know if you start a, a tweet with an at reply, it is only seen by the people who follow your organization and who follow the other the person uh, that is addressed. So very, very few people actually. Uh, so it's a public-private uh, reply. Um, the International Maritime Organization in London uh, uh, is also very uh, conversational and also um, the UN the European Space Agency, and lastly, uh, WHO, which is represented here too. Um, just to give you a snapshot of what it means to be uh, uh, conversational, this, this is a word cloud of the most used words on the Eurocontrol account. Good morning and flight delay are the, the key <laughs> words here. Um, and you can see what is quite interesting. You can see a number of airports uh, that have most disruptions. So Frankfurt here, um, <laughs> Brussels there, um, Heathrow is, is there, Gatwick very small on top, so, uh, which is, you know, gives you a nice idea uh, about how they tweet. What is interesting to note here, they rarely mention their own name, Eurocontrol, in their tweets. There are other, in the study you will find there are other organizations that very often use their own hashtag, use their own name in their tweets. Here, it's all about flight delays. Um, so, since when are the organizations on Twitter? Uh, well, the Greenpeace was the first international organization to sign up uh, to Twitter in April 2007, so almost uh, seven years ago, followed just uh, uh, a week later by uh, the World Economic Forum, uh, that, that was me at the time, I have to admit. Um, and then you see, it, especially in 2009, uh, many organizations you know, finally decided to, to sign up. And uh, this, uh, uh, this is quite interesting, you know, I think most of the international organizations now have a Twitter presence. Um, so we looked at 100 organizations, but we also looked at uh, the heads of these international organizations, <coughs> and 51 of them have personal Twitter accounts. Um, the most effective here, once again, we're looking at the number of retweets, is uh, the head of the IMF, Christine Lagarde, followed by um, uh, Mr. Moreno from, uh, Luis Alberto Moreno from the uh, Inter-American Development Bank, um, and then Jim Leap uh, from the WWF, Valerie Amos, and Kumi Naido uh, uh, are the most effective in terms of the retweets they get uh, on average on their tweets. Who's the most followed here? Um, sorry, who's the... Did I... Sorry, I guess I could... Uh, oh, maybe I missed one. Anyway, um, the most active, uh, Helen Clark from the UNDP. Um, I was told Helen Clark manages her Twitter feed herself. I'm not sure she actually tweets uh, 12 times a day uh, herself because uh, she is uh, quite active. Um, and then you can see uh, Kumi Naido comes in second position with uh, seven uh, tweets uh, per day. The UN spokes spokesperson account, very interesting account. Uh, it's not a head of an international organization, but the UN spokesperson account represents the Secretary General uh, and tweets about uh, his activities. And in uh, fourth position, the Secretary General of the Arab League, League Nabil El Arabi, um, he is also the most followed um, uh, head of an international organization um, before uh, Christian Lagarde, who's in second position, and uh, NATO's uh, Anders Fogh Rasmussen. Uh, you might have skipped that slide, that would be, uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, once again, here, what is very interesting. How conversational are they? Um, and here we see it's Richard Sesibera from the East African community, who is very, very conversational. 65% of his tweets uh, start with an ad reply to other Twitter users. Um, and there is a, in second position, Donald uh, Kabaruka from the African Development Bank. And there is a, uh, a trend here, because we've seen in our study in July for heads of state and heads of government that African leaders actually use Twitter 
only <coughs> or may need to converse with their constituents, with people who ask them questions uh, on, on Twitter. So it's also reflected here in the leaders of international organizations, um, how, they, how they use Twitter. Helen Cloud, very interestingly, a quarter of her, her tweets are at replies, followed by Richard Dictus from the UN Volunteers and Kumzile uh, Mlambo from UN uh, Women. So, coming to the personal Twitter accounts <coughs> of uh, heads of organizations, the debate is on, you know, should they have their own Twitter accounts uh, uh, and should staff tweet for them on their personal Twitter accounts and the day they leave their position they will leave with the Twitter account and with uh, the followers. This is uh, something I think that will uh, come interest us in the next uh, couple of uh, months and years. What I've, I, I have to note is that quite a few international organizations, especially here in Geneva, uh, to name just a few, the ITU, uh, ISO, um, IO, um, and IOM have set up, um, I would call them personal institutional accounts. So this is the account of uh, uh, Rob Steele, the uh, Secretary General of ISO. Um, it was just set up, it's the last account uh, to be set up just in, in September uh, of this year. Um, now this account will be handled to, handed over to the next Secretary General and will grow over time. Um, this account is an institutional account. Of course you might say, you know, it's not as personal, uh, but it's only in the name actually, ISOSECGEN, um, because on the profile it's very much in. Uh, it's, it's very, very personal. And then of course the tweets should also be um, uh, personal, which is not the case yet uh, with uh, Rob Steele, but I think more and more we will go to these institutional, uh, 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 personal institutional accounts. To give you another example, the head of communication of the Council of Europe in Strasbourg has renamed his personal account to uh, COE spokesperson. So, you know, which is quite interesting um, because he understands that, you know, this is an account for the organization that should go with the organization. And of course there's one example, uh, one world leader who does it very well, of course it's Pontifex. The account was set up under Benedict XVI. Uh, they didn't use Benedict in the, in the uh, Twitter handle when he left, when he resigned. Um, Pope Francis took over the handle and is the second most followed uh, world leader now. So this is something I think that uh, will come. Now, do they tweet personally or not? Um, very few actually, maybe a handful of uh, head, uh, heads of international organization tweet themselves. Actually, I found those who were not very active uh, tweeted themselves because they don't have much time uh, to tweet. One who does it work very well, you know, we've already seen him, is Richard Sedibera. And of course, um, when he was still uh, a Kenyan uh, minister, he tweeted this, you know, why should an A tweet on my behalf? I'm perfectly <coughs> capable of doing so myself. Thank you. So I think this is a slide that you should show it to your DGs and uh, heads of uh, uh, organization. Uh, yes, they can. I don't think we expect them to tweet every day uh, or, you know, what they had for breakfast. Uh, actually, that is something we should not do. Uh, I always say, tweet as you eat three times a day, but don't tweet about what you eat. <laughs> <coughs> so. Um, Let's look at some of uh, the tweets that have, you know, that have been most retweeted. Uh, I found it quite interesting. Uh, this is the tweet from the World Bank that by 2050 the planet will have 9 billion people. Food production must increase 70% to feed them all. This tweet is the most retweeted tweet of any uh, international organization in our study with over 5,000 uh, retweets, uh, which is quite interesting. Any idea? What, what are the, I'm, I'm showing three. Any idea what the next one could be? No? <clears throat> the second most retweeted one, of course, yeah. is the discovery of the Higgs boson at Sun. 4,750 tweets. We have preserved a new boson with a mass of a uh, uh, sent on the 4th of July 2012. It is very, very technical you know, for, for a tweet, I have to see. Um, and then the, the third most uh, uh, tweeted tweet from the United Nations, actually. Um, 
about the General uh, Assembly member state voting on uh, the Statute of Palestine, 138 yes, 9 no, and 41 abstentions, abstentions uh, on the 29th of uh, November 2012 with the four <coughs> What I find interesting in the number of, in these tweets is that it is, these tweets chronicle <coughs> history because we the users of Twitter decide what is, what constitutes uh, important news and what we find interesting. So it's basically crowdsourced uh, intelligence. We say these are really the, the important moments uh, on your timeline. So you know you can look at the most retweeted tweets. We have them on every profile of any every organisation in the on the website uh, to see which you know which are the most um, uh, retweeted ones. I don't know why the European Central Bank had one retweet. Uh, its most retweeted tweet is a congratulations to uh, France, Germany, Spain uh, for the uh, to be in the semi-finals of the European. Uh, football, uh, uh, the Euro uh, 2012. I don't know if that was a mistake from the uh, uh, social media community manager who, you know, tweeted on the on the his personal remarks on the uh, official account, or if that was really a, a uh, an official tweet of the uh, European Central Bank. Anyway, what is very important when tweeting is uh, make sure you at mention. Um, uh, other people, colleagues, uh, other organizations. This is a tweet we sent out about the Twitter alerts uh, that WHO is trialing. Uh, WHO has gone Twitter first, updating their Twitter status, status before update, updating their website. Uh, and not only that, you can also subscribe to their alerts to get them not only on Twitter, but via SMS on your, um, on your uh, telephone, which is quite useful in crisis situations and so on. Uh, we'll maybe later hear if they have used it uh, uh, yet. Um, but what is interesting is if you at mention uh, uh, who, who is in, well, you might even get a reply. Diplomacy, thanks for the shout out um, for our Twitter alerts, which, you know, of course made my day. Um, but it is this interaction that uh, Twitter is really uh, useful for. Uh, um, and, you know, these, these Twitter conversations are definitely a way to go. Um, the hashtags, very important. Uh, many of you use your own uh, hashtags with your corporate identity. I do really like the approach of UNDP. UNDP is setting the agenda every day with a different hashtag for every day. So we have Equality Monday, Empower Tuesday, Green Wednesday, and HIV Thursday and Resilience Sunday and, and Poverty Friday, um, which are consistently used, and you can see that on the uh, word cloud of their um, most uh, uh, mentioned words. So I think it's a great way to set the agenda uh, using hashtags. Um, and finally, Twitter lists. Uh, very few international organizations have actually Twitter list of their staff or of the regional accounts or of you know the other secondary accounts. Um, Eurocontrol has the most lists, 20 lists, including a list of all the uh, airports, of all the airlines. Uh, very useful. These are public lists where you have all the uh, Twitter handles of the airports. Uh, the UN has, a, of course, a very, very good list of the uh, entire UN system divided by languages and, uh, and region. And lastly, uh, this is the uh, WHO. Um, WHO, again, uh, also has uh, quite a number of, of lists. So lists are really, really important. It's a great resource for uh, other uh, Twitter users. Um, but lists are also useful to set up Twitter walls. Um, I don't know how many of you have trialed with uh, Twitter walls. Walls, a handful of international organizations have actually used Twitter walls, sometimes based on a hashtag, which are prone, of course, to hashtag spam. If you base Twitter walls on a list, you know, you can control which tweets, you know, which persons uh, will go up on the list. And um, one great example is the World Economic Forum, which has been running Twitter walls since 2008. And this one was, uh, this year, an eight meter wide, four meter high, Twitter wall in the center of the Davos Congress uh, Center. Um, and it was so amazing that uh, European uh, Finnish Minister for Europe, Alexander Stubb, even tweeted it. You know, it does get better. Here's the Twitter wall at WEF in Davos. Uh, and what was interesting, you had a leaderboard of you know, the, the most active 
participants, you know, with the bubble to the top. So, um, as I said, you know, to do this, you need to have lists. And this is a snapshot of the private Twitter list that we have on the Twiplomacy account. And this is very, this is really essential. Um, we have 11,000, close to 11,000 uh, followers on the account. Um, and I have to say, I think I know most of the people who follow us because I do put them into lists, into lists of international organizations. So 221 international organiza organizations follow us. Diplomats, triple pilots, embass uh, embassies and ambassadors, uh, 448 journalists, and 122 heads of state and heads of government. Now, these are private lists. Why is it useful? I can send them a direct message with a click of a button, which I've actually done for the launch of this study. We reached out uh, to the journalists, to the, the diplomats, offering a copy of the report, to which over 25% uh, replied favorably. And so over the past days, I've been sending out 300 uh, emails with a copy, including to, to Florian. Um, so my inbox, my Twitter inbox, is pretty active with 100, this is the screenshot from July, 108 uh, direct message coming in. Uh, I know some of you, some organizations have used this, uh, the Global Fund uh, and, the, and the World Economic Forum, to reach out, to amplify uh, their message, to reach out to their most influential followers. So keep that in mind. I think it's, it's really uh, useful to use direct messages. They sound spammy, but they're actually uh, very, very powerful. Um, Twitter chats and global conversations are nothing new. Uh, the Secretary General sat down, uh, I think, two years ago for a global conversation where he would answer questions that ca came in uh, via Twitter and that was then videoed and shared on YouTube. But um, Twitter chats have been used uh, by Christine Lagarde in her bid to become a head of the IMF, um, by Helen Clark quite uh, regularly, uh, and also by Christina Figueres uh, from the UNFCC, uh, the um, uh, UN Climate Talks. Um, so, Twitter chats, um, I know all of you have heard maybe about the uh, disaster that the bank JP Morgan had last week in, uh, in the States, uh, because they said we're open to a Twitter chat, and they had 80,000 tweets, uh, mainly uh, critical uh, tweets about them, and so they decided, oops, uh, uh, we'll pull the plug, it was a bad idea. Well, you know, while they had one uh, accident, several um, hundred Twitter chats are organized every day, uh, and, you know, quite a few international organizations use this, uh, this tool, and I think they wish they had 80,000 uh, yeah. 80, uh, reactions. But it's a great, really a great tool to, to engage, um, and the twi Twitter chats have um, a couple of advantages over traditional press conferences. Um, a, uh, you can see the question in writing before you reply to it, giving you precious time to, to, to ponder your response. Um, you don't have to reply to all of the questions you get. Uh, the bank, the JP Morgan, should have continued, uh, I think, with the Twitter chat because nobody expected them to react to 80,000 uh, tweets. Uh, of course, they, they should have reacted to some critical comments, but so um, it is. It is really a, a, a great means to 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 engage and to converse with uh, uh, your followers. Twitter design for me is crucial, very very important. Um, not every, not all international organisations have um, a Twitter header. This is the Twitter header of Greenpeace, which I think is among the best uh, out there because the Twitter header ties in nicely with the avatar, the picture. So uh, this is actually a, a, a Twitter header from a couple of months ago. Uh, they have since changed it, but still keeping the same kind of idea. How can we make those two pictures work together? Um, and of course they have the Twitter background, but actually the Twitter background is not as important because most people will access Twitter on mobile platforms and the only thing you, can see, you will see is this header picture. So if there is any uh, any visual that you should uh, really uh, uh, look at on your Twitter profile, it's make sure you have a, a good, compelling uh, Twitter header picture. Greenpeace up right now has changed the avatar, um, which is an, an appeal to free the uh, 30 activists currently held uh, in Russia. So it's kind of uh, it's broken, but anyway, it's um, 
I think uh, the use of uh, uh, visuals on their account is, uh, is quite interesting. And lastly, I don't know how many of you have trialed Vine. Uh, according to our study, only uh, very, very few have trialed the, the Vine video <coughs> application, which is uh, six second videos uh, that loop. Uh, there's one uh, which was sent on the account of the UN spokesperson of uh, uh, Secretary General Ban Ki moon saying happy birthday uh, to the UN on international. Uh, uh, on the anniversary, the UN's anniversary, uh, which is quite uh, quite interesting. Um, so, lastly, <laughs> branded short links. There's only four organizations which have their own short link um, uh, URL. W uh, well, the World Economic Forum, uh, WEF.ch, Refugees, RFG.ee, uh, and UNICEF. Um, and the OECD. The OECD probably has the, the best and the shortest uh, uh, short link in you know, uh, four letters. Um, these are used on every single one of their tweets instead of bit.ly or tiny URL or other link shorteners. And the advantage, of course, is yes, you can track uh, the, the clicks and you know, from where, etc. But also, uh, you will brand every single one of your tweets. So, uh, you know, the, there's always branding. Actually, uh, the World Economic Forum, I know the hashtag WEF is, is used in every single tweet. Actually, they could do away with the, their own hashtag and just have, you know, just as long as they, they use the, uh, the link to, to brand it. So I think it is really, really important to, to think about short links. I like, you know, the refugee, I uh, like it uh, a lot because uh, they've done away with the vowels uh, uh, and, you know, to, to create this. Uh, this uh, short link. .ee, for those of you who don't know, is Estonia, uh, and CF is, uh, I think, uh, Congo, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, oh, sorry, no, CD is, uh, .cd is uh, Democratic Republic of Congo for the LBC. <coughs> so, with that, uh, I think I'm through. Thank you very much. You can find this presentation on SlideShare at http slash person for Bursa Marstella, uh, slash R04I5.